Hello, everybody. I'm teacher Zhang Yan. I'm very glad to introduce the history of Nanjing. Nanjing, located in eastern China, is the capital of Jiangsu province and an important city in eastern China. It takes one hour by half-speed rail from Nanjing to Shanghai, only about 300 kilometers. And it takes 3.5 hours by high-speed rail from Nanjing to Beijing, the capital of China, about 1,000 kilometers. The Yangzi River, the mother river of China, rises in the Tangula Mountains on Qinghai Tibet Plateau, which is known as the roof of the world. It is boundless and runs eastward till the ocean. In the lower reaches of the Yangzi River, there stands Nanjing city. The Yangtze River flows slowly from south to north on the west side of Nanjing city. One of the tributaries, the Qinghai River, flows into the main urban area of Nanjing. It has nurtured the ancient civilization of Nanjing and is known as China's first historical and cultural river. To the east of Nanjing city, there is a mountain named as Purple Mountain. Because it is said that purple sandstone and the mountain reflect a purple golden light under the sunlight, there are many scenic spots and historical sites in Purple Mountain. So it is called the first mountain of humanities in Chinese cities. To the north of Nanjing city, there is a lake called Xuanwu Lake, which is close to the foot of Purple Mountain with a history of more than 1,500 years. It is the largest imperial garden lake in China. It is known as the Pearl of Jingling, and Jingling is the old name of Nanjing. To the west of Nanjing city, where the Yangtze River and the Qinghai River meet, there is a famous relic named as Stone City, built in 333 BC and it was a military town to ensure the safety of ancient Nanjing. More than 1,600 years later, in 1366 AD, Emperor Zhu Yuanzhang of the Ming Dynasty of China built the Ming City Wall, which is built according to the direction of Nanjing's mountains and water systems. To the south of the city wall is the Qinghai River as a natural moat. To the east is the Purple Mountain as a support. To the north is the Xuanwu Lake as the barrier. And to the west, the stone city is surrounded by the city wall, thus forming a three-dimensional military fortress with unique defensive characteristics. It is the world's longest, largest scale and best preserved ancient city wall. The Yangtze River, Qinghai River, Purple Mountain, Xuanwu Lake, and the Stone City make up this beautiful and long-standing Nanjing city.
ancient humans were active in Nanjing as early as 1 to 1.2 million years ago. Nanjing ape man had lived in Tangshan between 350,000 and 600,000 years ago. Nanjing, an ancient city with a history of more than 2,500 years, has a civilization history of more than 7,000 years. The history of building cities in Nanjing dated back to 571 BC. In 333 BC, the king of Chu, a vassal state of China, built a stone city named as Jingling Yi, which is the source of Jingling, the old name of Nanjing. Nanjing is also known as the ancient capital of the six dynasties. From 220 AD to 280 AD, the three main regimes of Wei, Shu, Wu sprung up in ancient China. In 229 AD, Sun Quan, emperor of the state of Wu, established the capital in Nanjing. Nanjing has since risen, bringing China's political center to the south bank of Yangtze River and leading the development of Yangtze River Basin and the entire southern region of China. Since then, the Eastern Jing Dynasty and the Southern Dynasties, including the Four Dynasties, Song, Qi, Liang, and Cheng, successively established their capitals here. The whole history of these six dynasties is more than 300 years. Therefore, Nanjing is known as the ancient capital of the six dynasties, and its culture can affect the entire East Asian region. 500多年前，也就是春秋战国时期，楚国人就在现在的南京六合区建了一个小村庄，这便是南京的起源。后来，楚国人觉得南京藏了王气，就往地下埋金子，想镇住王气。可能听到这儿，大家都想去淘宝了，对吧？别想了，雷雷早就去挖过了。这古文中的金子，可能只是铜而已。楚国还在南京的清凉山附近修了一座大要塞，以防有人来偷袭王气。又因为这里埋过金子，所以要塞取名为金陵邑。为什么要修在这里呢？因为地势好，长江。就从山脚下流过，浪花把山崖冲成峭壁，敌军根本就爬不上来。对，一千九百四十三次。不过，不管是挖金子还是挖要塞，都没有改变楚国人的霉运。他最后还是成了秦始皇统一的垫脚石，走得，导致“金陵”这个名字留了下来，成了南京的一个别称。此后的几百年里，南京的存在感一直不太强，直到三国时期，孙权把国都搬到了这里来，取名为建业，他才渐渐把存在感刷回来。一，不远的前方就是我们未来的家。东吴在这扎根后，短短几十年的发展强度比过去几百年都强。都快点上面住的可都是官老爷。饿着了，你们付得起责吗？除了政治商业越来越繁荣，建业还在东吴的手里变成了中国的佛教大本营。孙权下令修建的初建寺是江南地区最早的佛寺，也是现在大报恩寺的前身。由于孙家规划的比较好，即使东吴最后凉了，这座城市依旧在继续发展，国都的头衔也没有变过。东吴之后的东晋，再加上南北朝时期的宋、齐、梁、陈四个国家，都把老挝扎在了这里，这也使得南京发展越来越好。当时全世界没有哪座城市敢和南京比规模。During the six dynasties, Nanjing was successively known as Jian Ye, which means to make achievements and Jian Kang. The Jian Kang city of six dynasties. Played an important role in the history of the development of Chinese capitals. It set a precedent for its central axis symmetrical layout. It found the symmetrical layout and the style of the main buildings, which are unique to East Asian capitals, and it became a model for late capital construction. Jian Kang Palace, the imperial palace of the Six Dynasties was the largest and most magnificent palace in China at that time. It survived 360 years. Its layout and architectural form not only directly affected the capitals of the Northern Dynasties and the Falling Sui and the Tang Dynasties, but also affected the capitals of Kyoto, Nara in Japan, and Beiji on the Korean Peninsula and profoundly affected the construction of palaces in later generations. The relics of Jiankang city 
are still preserved in the Nanjing Library and the Oriental Metropolitan Museum. Tiankang City of the Six Dynasties was the largest city in the world at that time, with a population of over one million, making it the first city in the world with a population of over one million. Both Tiankang City and the ancient Roman city are known as the two centers of the classical civilization in the world. The culture of southern dynasties, represented by Tiankang, has had an extremely profound influence in human history. Mathematician and astronomer Zhu Tongzhi, 429 to 500 years, for the first time in the history of the world mathematics, calculated pi to the seventh place after the decimal point, that is, between 3.1415926 and 3.1415927. The Zhu ratio, the approximate ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter, Zhu Tongzhi made a significant contribution to the study of the mathematics. And it was not until the 16th century that the Arabic mathematician I. Kasi broke this record. Zhu Chongzhi, who was born in 1500 years old, was one of the most important people in the world. The most important thing is that he reached the age of 6 years old. This achievement is the most famous scientific achievement of the world. Actually, the study of the Chinese period of time 可追溯到周必算经和九章算术中关于静一周三古律的记载，后历经数代科学家的相继探索，日益精确。到了魏晋时期，著名数学家刘辉开创了一种全新的计算方法——歌元术，而祖冲之便是在他的基础上刻苦钻研，将圆周率数值精确到了小数点后第七位。同时，他还给出了圆周率的两个分数形式。七分之二十二和一百一十三分之三百五十五，即约律和幂律。后世为纪念他对圆周率数值计算的贡献，又将约律以他的名字命名，称为祖律。值得一提的是，祖冲之是从一个直径为一丈的大圆的内接正六边形，一直做到一万两千二百八十八边形，然后一个一个算出这些多边形的周长。而这样异常庞大的计算量，在当时所依赖的工具仅仅是一些小竹片。通过对它们的不同排列组合来计算，得到了不同的数值，各种艰辛，可想而知。可是，就是这样一项枯燥繁琐又费时费力的工作，祖冲之在成年累月的坚持着。最终，他用超乎寻常的耐心与细致，交出了一份满分答卷。在世界纪录史上留下了辉煌印记，名垂千古。During the Six Dynasties, the Maritime Silk Road East China Sea Route with Nanjing as the center was officially opened. There were tens of thousands of Chinese and foreign ships anchored in Nanjing's Shi Taojing, which served as an international terminal connecting the river to the sea. Then Nanjing became an important central city of China's maritime silk route. China's sericulture and weaving technology was introduced to Europe through the Middle East, and the Roman glass wheel also circulated to China. During the Six Dynasties, the capital Nanjing attracted many Western and Tianzhu monks to translate the classics and carry forward the Buddhism. Nanjing thus became the center of Buddhism in the south, with more than 500 temples here. A large number of famous figures in the history of Chinese Buddhism began to appear, followed by the birth of the doctrines of various sects, and the development of Buddhism showed unprecedented prosperity. Nanjing was no longer the capital from 581 to 907. That is, during Sui and Tang dynasties in China. But its geographical advantages made Nanjing's economy and culture continue to grow stronger. It attracted many famous poets to live and visit Nanjing and to write a large number of poems about Nanjing, which is still popular today. 
Nanjing once again became the capital of the Southern Tang Dynasty, which followed of the Tang Dynasty, and it brought prosperous and rejuvenation to Nanjing again. Emperor of the Southern Tang Dynasty rebuilt the city wall of Nanjing, enclosing the residential area of Qinghai River into the city. The combination of the military defense city and the commercial economic market laid the layout basis for the Nanjing city in the Ming Dynasty, 400 years later. Li Yu, the last emperor of the Southern Tang Dynasty, was very good at writing poetry, and his poetry left an indelible mark on Nanjing history with infinite cultural qualities. There are bazaars on both sides of the Qinghai River. Economic prosperity is accompanied by the development of culture and poetry, painting, and calligraphy had developed a generation of style. The Song Dynasty was divided into the Northern Song Dynasty and the Southern Song Dynasty. During the Northern Song Dynasty, Nanjing was a political, economic, and a cultural center of southern China. With the country's highest school, the Nanjing Imperial College, Ying Tianfu Academy of Classical Learning. In 1072, the Japanese monk Chen Xun wrote in his diary about the prosperity on both sides of the Nanjing City Canal and the colorful nightlife. Outside Nanjing, there are at least two bridges. The bridges are where water and land meet, so they are the good place to, for ships to anchor. Up and down the bridge there are the many shops. The lights are brilliant at night, and the music can spread for miles. The second bridge where that boat stops is a big market along the canal. The trade volume of goods is so huge that the goods carried by the boatmen are easy to sell. At the end of the Northern Song Dynasty, the third major southward migration took place, and the Nanjing once again became one of the world's largest metropolises at that time. On the first day of the fifth lunar month in 1127, Zhao Gou, the first emperor of the Southern Song Dynasty ascended the throne in Ying Tianfu, which is now known as Nanjing. Nanjing has an emperor's palace and became an important military, political, and economic center of the Southern Song Dynasty. In the Yuan Dynasty, Nanjing was the center of China's textile industry. There were more than 6,000 professional craftsmen in the city, and the Nanjing Yunjing became a royal product. Nanjing Yunjing brocade weaving skills were included in the World Intangible Cultural Heritage List in 2009. Yunjing is a jacquard silk brocade that is woven, dyed, and then woven with gold and silver thread. Because of its beautiful color and glory, it is named after the beautiful clouds in the sky. Yunjing ranks first among the three famous Chinese Asian brocades, Yunjing, Songjing, and Shujing, and is a pearl of Chinese silk culture. Nanjing's brocade industry started in the late Eastern Jin Dynasty and flourished during the Southern Dynasty. During the Song Dynasty, Nanjing's brocade industry developed to the unprecedented levels. Even as Nanjing experienced a good and bad time, the silk shops were busy day and night. There were well-known shops such as Ren He Li, Wu Yi Xiang, and Wu Xiu Zhuang, which brought an unprecedented prosperity to the area. In the Yuan Dynasty, because the rulers liked to use golden and silver as decoration, the decoration of silk with gold and silver strands became an important feature of Nanjing Yunjing weaving technique. Nanjing Yunjing brocade weaving skills matured during the Ming and the Qing dynasties. According to the records, in the middle of the Qing dynasty, the silk industry became the city's most important industry. At that time, 
There were more than 30,000 looms in Nanjing and more than 200,000 weavers, accounting for about one third of the city's population. With the improvement of weaving techniques, Yunjin in the Ming and Qing dynasties was more meticulous and appreciated. Being well received by the imperial court and the ordinary people alike. So there is a saying that an inch of silk is one inch of gold. With technological developments, some Yunjin production methods have been modernized. But the flowery silk, the most complicated variety, still must be crafted with traditional methods. Brocade, because of its beautiful imagery, was regarded by the Asians as a symbol of beauty. And idioms such as flowery like brocade vividly illustrate the profound influence of brocade artistry on Chinese culture. Nanjing Yunjin has become more than just handicraft. It is essentially a window into a traditional culture centered on Chinese brocade. In 1368, the Ming Dynasty was established with Nanjing as its capital. Nanjing once again became the political, economic, and cultural center of China. In the initial stage in Ming Dynasty, Nanjing had a population of more than 700,000. It was the largest and the most popular city in China at that time, and the largest city in the world. The Nanjing Ming Dynasty city wall, which was built for 27 years, was the largest city wall in the world. The Ming Palace in Nanjing was the largest palace complex in the medieval world, and its architectural layout became the blueprint for the design of the Ming Dynasty capital, Beijing city, and the palaces of Ming Dynasty. In 1402, Zhu Di, the third emperor of the Ming Dynasty, ascended the throne in Nanjing. Three years later, he detached Zheng He as an envoy to the west. Nanjing was a decision-making place, shipbuilding base, and part of a departure for Zheng He's voyage to the west. In June 1405, Zheng He set sail from Nanjing Longjiang Pass for the first voyage, and returned to the Nanjing in the autumn of 1407. During 28 years, Zheng He made seven voyages to the west. Zheng He's fleet has been to more than 30 countries and regions. It is currently known to have reached the east coast of Africa, the Red Sea, and the Mega as far as possible, and may have been to Australia. The treasure ship made in Nanjing is the largest wooden sailing ship in the history of Chinese navigation and the history of the world. The fleet is more than 100 ships, each can carry more than 27,000 people, including sailors and soldiers, as well as technicians and translators. The boat is full of Chinese specialties, such as gold and silver jewelry, silk and porcelain. Whenever Zheng He went to a country or region, these specialties were given to the locals as gifts from the emperor of the Ming Dynasty, expressing the desire for friendly exchange. Zheng He's fleet was warmly received by overseas countries and also gained friendship with locals. During 28 years, Zheng He's fleet has been busy going back and forth between China and overseas countries to build bridges of friendship and trade channels. Zheng He's voyages to the West are not only of great significance in Chinese history, but also a pioneering undertaking in the history of the world navigation. The fleet of the Ming Dynasty crossed the Indian Ocean from the Western Pacific and went straight to the West Asia and the East Coast of Africa, opening up direct routes through the Western Pacific and the Indian Ocean. Zheng He's voyage to the West was 
87 years before Columbus discovered the African continent, 93 years before Da Gama opened a new route to the east, and 116 years before Magellan arrived in the Philippines. He made great contributions to human navigation. In 1407, the Yongle Canon was written in Nanjing, covering the wealth of knowledge of the Chinese nation for thousands of years. In the Encyclopedia entry of Encyclopedia Britannica, the Yongle Canon is listed as the largest encyclopedia in the history of the world, and it has become an important symbol of Chinese culture. In the Middle Ming Dynasty, Nanjing was still the largest and populous city in the world, with a population of 1.2 million. In 1582, after the Italian missionary Matteo Ricci traveled to China, he wrote in the critic biography of Matteo Ricci, I am dazzled by this metropolis. Nanjing in the Ming Dynasty is so majestic that it can be comparable to any of the largest capitals in Europe in the 16th century. Hongwu, the emperor of Hu founded the Ming Dynasty, made it a miracle, and everything in the East is beyond compare. Throughout the Ming Dynasty, Nanjing has always been China's economic and cultural center, and its southern military and political center. The dynasty after the Ming Dynasty was the Qing Dynasty. At this time, Nanjing had a population of 1 million, making it one of the 10 largest cities in the world. Nanjing is not only a political and a military center for the Qing government to govern the south of Yangtze River, but also an economic hub and cultural center. The large-scale Jiangling Weaving House established in Nanjing produced silk fabric to make royal needs because Nanjing's silk weaving industry ranked first in the country. A series of major historical events that occurred in the modern history of China, such as the signing of the Nanjing Treaty, the establishment of the Taiping Heavenly Kingdom, and the establishment of the Republic of China uh, occurred in Nanjing. The gains and the losses of Nanjing not only influenced the safety of the southeastern territory of the Qing dynasty, but also directly affected the survival of the Qing regime. After the Opium War of 1842, the Qing government signed the Nanjing Treaty, the first unequal treaty in modern Chinese history. On a British warship on the Xia Guan River in Nanjing, thus opening the course of China's modern history. In 1853, the Taiping army conquered Nanjing and established the Taiping Heavenly Kingdom, which was renamed as Tianjin. This is the first peasant war in Chinese history that has risen in the south and spread to the whole of China. It was also an unprecedented peasant war in the history of the world. On December 29, 1911, the Republic of China was established. On New Year's Day in 1912, 
The provisional government of the Republic of China was established in Nanjing. On April the 18th, 1927, the Nanjing National Government was established, and Nanjing was designated as the capital. From 1927 to 1937, the large-scale capital construction was carried out in Nanjing, which laid a solid foundation for the development of Nanjing's modern city. By 1936, the urban population of Nanjing has increased to more than 1 million, making it one of the six largest cities in China. On December the 13th, 1937, Nanjing was occupied by Japan. The Japanese army carried out a large-scale massacre in Nanjing and its surrounding areas for more than 40 days, known as the Nanjing Massacre in history. In 1945, the Second World War ended. At 9 o'clock on September 9th, the Nanjing Central Army Military Academy held a surrender ceremony for the Chinese theater of the Second World War. Japan announced its unconditional surrender. In May 1946, the national government returned to Nanjing. After the founding of the People's Republic of China in 1949, Nanjing was designated as the capital of Jiangsu province. In February 1994, the central government designated Nanjing as a sub-provisional administrative level. Since ancient times, Nanjing has not only been the political and economic center of southern China for a long time, but also an important national science and educational center. It is a city that values culture and education, with abundant cultural resources and outstanding literary achievements. It has the reputation of the center of world culture and the first academic center in southeast China. More than half of the top scholars in China in Ming Dynasty and the Qing Dynasty came from Nanjing Jiangnan Examination Office. In the history of Chinese literature, there are tens of thousands of literary works written in Nanjing or related to Nanjing, and the number ranks first in China. Nanjing is the city where Chinese literature began to become independent and conscious. The first literature museum in Chinese history was established here. Nanjing was also a starting point of modern Chinese education, and China's first poetic theory and criticism monograph of poetic realm, the first literary theory and criticism monograph of carving of dragons at the core of literature, the first children's enlightenment book, thousand character classic, and the earliest existing collection of poetry and essay selections from Zhao Ming were all born in Nanjing. Nobel Prize winner Pro Bucks awarding winning book, The Earth, was also created in Nanjing. On October the 31st, uh, 2019, UNESCO announced that Nanjing had been selected as the literature capital of the world and became the first city in China to receive this reputation. Up to 2020, Nanjing has 68 colleges and universities of various types after Beijing and Shanghai in third place, advocating literature and attaching importance to science and education are the distinctive spiritual qualities of Nanjing people. In August 2020, UN Habitat released a list of top 100 Asian cities. Nanjing ranked 11th in Asia and 5th in mainland China. As an Asian capital, Nanjing is an important birthplace of Chinese civilization and has long been the political, economic, and cultural center of southern China. Nanjing became the chosen place for the Han nationality to recuperate in many difficult times like during the war-torn period in Chinese history, after many areas in the central plains were occupied by different nationalities, and when the Han nationality has about to be devastated. 
Nanjing is a pivotal capital in Chinese history, and it is also a famous cultural city with a long history. While you travel to Nanjing, you can not only get a sense of fashion in its modern city, but also experience the relaxed ambience of the ancient Nanjing city. Nanking, the capital of Jiangsu province, a historical city that is full of vitality, a merge of the classics and modernity. It embodies a long story, no matter it is glorious or devastated. It reflects hundred years of history, the serendipity of a growing land, the perfect combination of the East and the West. From the ancient capital to the modern city, we are here to develop the origin of the modern China spirit. Time flies, flies like an arrow. The scar in the diaries of John Rabe has already become part of history. On behalf of our cultural memory, we began to write new stories for this land. This would be an epic for us. This is Nanjing. Welcome to Nanjing.